this one of the ago. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag. And it came even to pass on the third day, that behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent, and earth upon his head, and so it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the earth, and did obeisance. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, I went to Mara, I pray thee tell me. And he answered, For the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people are all fallen dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, Thou knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much, Lord, for this new life you've given us this uh, uh, Sunday, this your day. And because of that, we are here, O God, Lord, to, uh, uh, to worship you as your people. And Lord, uh, we therefore uh, pray that you bless, O God, Lord, our service uh, today, O God, Lord, especially the preaching of the Word of God. May you help us, O God, Lord, to... Uh, to grow uh, in our Christian lives, O God Lord, as your people, by uh, keeping, O God Lord, uh, a regular study of the very Word of God. Because it is it, O God Lord, that will grow us in our Christian life. Without the Word of God, we can never succeed, O God Lord, in waiting for the coming of Christ. All of us will backslide, O God Lord, without the Word of God that will sustain our strength wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word of God that is always so preached, O God Lord, that we always hear, are the only thing, O God Lord, that will make us uh, succeed in, in waiting for the coming of our Savior. And therefore, we uh, always pray that you feed us every time we come to the Church of God, and let your word, O God Lord, reach our souls and make us O God, Lord, uh, a Christian that is dedicated, O God, Lord, to you. Make us a believer, O God, Lord, that is living a life that is indeed uh, a Christian in your sight, and in the sight of the world. And so we depend, O God, Lord, on your word uh, to make us, O God, Lord, uh, a better person. And this morning we come again to the uh, uh, opening of the book of Second Samuel. Let's tell us, O Lord, the, the great story of our forefathers, one of the greatest and the mightiest uh, saints in the Old Testament, by which, O Lord, we can lean upon is no other than King David. And right here in this chapter, we are going to open his life, because this is, I think, his debut, O Lord, with respect to his ascension as a king, and this will start all it all. And help me, O Lord, to unravel what it is, O God, Lord, that uh, should be known by all of us to learn from the life of our fathers, who is the progenitor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so bless your word in our hearts, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we take our seats, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> take care. Uh, <clears throat> this morning we are going to... Uh, open a uh, new book, and this new book is Second Samuel. Alright, so uh, we have 31 chapters in First Samuel that tell us all about the story of King Saul. And after this book, we are open up with the uh, story of the life of King David. Although, King David was told in the for Samuel, but that was not, ladies and gentlemen, a book that will tell indeed about David, uh, because uh, for Samuel will tell us about the life of King Saul, and now that King Saul was dead, he was already uh, buried, he was burned alive, uh, he, he was not burned alive, he was burned uh, by the uh, Jabishites. Uh, the opening of uh, Second Samuel is about the story of David. So I am thinking to what uh, 
uh, thrust will I put here in, there is only one word that can capture uh, this uh, chapter, the name David. Okay, so how David's life started to tell a story. How David's life started to tell a story. So, because King Saul was dead already, David must come to the scene. He must begin to appear, you know, because Saul already was dead. So he will, uh, he will, uh, he will take, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, he will take the uh, leadership of that country that, why, that was left by King Saul. Uh, lahat ng mga uh, bagong pangulo, you know, they are nervous when they go to the palace because they are going to be surprised with a lot of things that are not known to them that were hidden by the last uh, leadership. Uh, and, uh, you know, no, nung nag si Marcos, you know, I, that's the time I understand that a pre president has a lot, should have a lot of skill. And none among, among us in this country is better than, than Marcos Jr. He's too good. You know, because his speech will tell us about his knowledge about country. Oh, naunod, na permi. When I was listening to all of his speeches, I understand that I only understand 40% of what he knows. And none, none among us Filipinos could understand that. Maybe he is the best, you know, brain today in this country. Uh, he speaks of foreign policies and he speaks of everything about economy and, you know, he was so, he was really a, a good president. leadership president na. You know, and if other, nobody, nobody at this level in our time, uh, his knowledge of uh, leadership in a country is so uh, gargantuan. And of course, because he was a witness to his father's uh, uh, leadership, and his father was the best of all the presidents in this country. He understood everything. You know, he's, he understood everything about leadership. And so, uh, he must, he, he was not, I believe Marcos was not intimidated, nor he was surprised, you know, when he took the leadership, because he understood everything. Now, uh, regarding David, According to this story, David was 30 years old by this time. It was the same age when the Lord Jesus Christ made his debut. Because according to the uh, Jewish uh, law, a man must be up to 30 years old before he can be able to have a, what we call the, a moral authority to stand anywhere. You must be 30. And so Jesus did not die at 25 because he was outside the law. And so he must, he must begin his uh, uh, debut at age 30. And David also was like the Lord Jesus Christ. He took the uh, rulership at the age of 30. And so I believe that he was not so much surprised. So this morning we are going to look uh, at David, a man who was reputed as the man after God's own heart. That was his reputation. And let's take a look on the uh, out, we call it the outset of his, uh, of his uh, rule as a king. But he was not yet anointed here. He was anointed in the past, but he was not officially anointed in the eyes of all the people. But uh, as, a, as the leader, who will take the, uh, what we call scepter, what are the things that are exposed in this Second uh, Samuel chapter number one to tell us about his life? So how did how did David's life start to tell a story? So what I'm I'm talking here is his life will tell a story until the last chapter of this book. But this is just the beginning of his story as 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 as, as a leader. Okay, so 
Number one, let's go. Kasi doon lang na ito. Baka mabita ka. Please at ta. Mga alas, alauna. Siguro malpas ako dito yun. Amen. So number one, let's go. He received gravid expose. I use the word E because the second point is starts also with letter E. Or that is that the matter the word news. All right. So he received a gravid news. When I say gravid, it is full of meaning. David, at the onset of his appearance as the leader of Israel, he immediately received a full in news that is full of meaning. That will, I believe, give a good mark at him. Because, you know, the uh, opening of chapter number one is a message from the Lord, not only for David, but for all the believers in the world. With respect to the, uh, to the uh, what we call summary of the life of King Saul. So King Saul's life uh, was summarized in chapter number one. And God made a very, very pungent, uh, straightforward summary of uh, King Saul's life on this chapter number one. And I believe that it took a great mark on David's heart to reign as a king. You know, chapter number one. So he received a news that is full of meaning. Number one, look at this one. A under this. Expose that revealed the last thing King Saul had seen. Or a news that will tell us that King, King Saul's death, the last thing that his eyes had seen right here was exposed in chapter number one. So uh, and it has a gravid, a full of meaning thing. All right, so let's read that one. Uh, let's read. In verse 2, It came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head, and it so was when he came to David that he fell to the earth in deep obeisance. And David said to him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel I am escaped. And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear alive, And lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called me, and I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. That must be the, the, the most serious emotional event that happened there. The last thing that uh, King Saul had seen in his eyes is an Amalekite. And that is a gravid story. It is full of meaning. So what does that mean? What is that? How, 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 how that last uh, side of King Saul be full of meaning? If we are going to summarize the life of King Saul when he began to reign, what did God tell him? He told him that he will exterminate the Amalekites. He will kill them all. But what happened? He disobeyed God on that. And did not kill them all. You see? And that was the spot in his integrity as a king before the eyes of the Lord. Because he did not obey the Lord. And that made a spot of distrust in the eyes of God for Saul. You know? And because of the crime that he committed, it was a reversal of of everything. Here was a man who was ordered by the Lord to kill the Amalekite, and he did not do it. And the last thing that he had seen before he died is an Amalekite. And he must beg this Amalekite to kill him. That is a gravid thing. What does it mean? That if, they, if, if, if King Saul had killed and, and obeyed God on that, on that era, 40 years past, 
and he annihilated all the Amalekites. He should not beg this Amalekite to kill him in response. So it is a grave thing because the last thing that King Saul had seen was like a message from the Lord. God is telling him, "Look at him. He is an Amalekite. That was your failure in fault. And right now, that Amalekite that I ordered you to kill will be the one to kill you. And he will not kill you. You need to beg him to kill you. So that is what we call grave thing." It is full of meaning that the last thing that King Saul had seen before he died was the punishment from the Lord. You see, so there is a word in the Bible that the word of God that was said and read and learned by people is the same word that will judge them at the last day. So, so it is a gravid thing, you know. So that is the first thing here, the expose. You know, what is this expose? Expose, ladies and gentlemen, a news that David received that he understand. Naawatan na nga ayo when he understood that when King Saul died, that God was telling him a message. He was telling him a message that it is not good to break the word of God as easily as that, because if God will punish you, He will show you to your own eyes. You know. The gravity of your disobedience, and so the last thing that they ever saw was not the face of his children. The last thing that they ever saw was the face of an Amalekite. You know, and I believe that this had given a spark, spark on the heart of David. When David, I believe, received this news from the Amalekite himself, I believe that he shivered on that. And it gave him, ladies and gentlemen, a foundation on how to rule Israel. Because at this juncture, David was thinking that God must be very serious in His word. Why in the world? Why in the world that the chastisement of King Saul was so deep that he wasn't even killed, but he was the first, the last thing that he saw was the Amalekite himself. It was the man. It was the tribe that God ordered, you know, King Saul to. To exterminate. You see that. So God is very serious regarding His words, and that is gravid for me. That is full of meaning. A news, ladies and gentlemen, that is full of meaning. And to David, I believe that David need to see such kind of principle from the Lord, because he is going to lead the people as well. And I believe that the most faithful a man in the Bible who obeyed the word of God is David. Because he had seen already the example of David of God's wrath regarding those who disobey the word of the Lord, you know it was a grave news. It was indeed a grave expose uh, on the part of David. And the uh, jemutang kileson kanya tayo tanga rat nag nagsapa. You know that God is really very serious regarding His word. We really must obey it. You know because when we disobey the word of God. The chastisement we are going to see it with our naked eyes. It is the same. Uh, it is the same law. It is the same law or word of God that we break that will come to us. You know, ngamang singil kanya tayo. You see, so this is the first thing, and I reveal it first for Samuel that David received a grave news. He received a grave expose. So he was so they so King Saul. The last thing that he had seen before he died was the crime that he committed. It was the crime that he committed, and so I believe that it pains the heart of Saul not because of the tears of the sword, but because of the sight that he had seen. Can you imagine that? He would be better be cut by sword than to see the chastisement. The reason why you are chastised on your naked eye by your naked eye, and he saw this Amalekite. Person, and that was full of meaning to him, to David, and to us this morning. It is indeed a grave news. All right. So, secondly, not only that he received a grave news or grave expose, but a under that 
na naalat ko ba si Andrew ay under that expose that reveal the lasting and solid sin B expose or news that tested David's person so this is the second thing a news because when he looked at the Amalekite with the uh, uh, with the crown of King Saul in his hand being the leader he must decide what he's going to do to the Amalekite all right so a leader uh, and yet, the leader must be very fast in deciding things that are really needful to be decided. That's what the leader is. He must really decide. You know, and his decision must be very, very, uh, you know, it must be, it must be wise decision because that will tell about the uh, quality of the leader himself. And so that man was an Amalekite and he was holding the king's what we call the uh, diamond, uh, what is that? Crown. And so what, 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 what is that? So number two, a news that tested David's person. So being a leader, what is he going to do with that? All right, number one. Number one, he required facts. He required facts. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a perfect quality of a leader when judging things, he must decide on facts. So let's read in verse 13 and 14. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. Okay, so let's take a look on that story. Huh? You know, being a leader, you are not going to Listen to hearsay or second rate news. You must yourself hear it firsthand. So he must ask the man from whence he is. And he said, I am an Amalekite. Okay, so that is what we call self confession. And so David did not did not know that he is an Amalekite because of a news from other people that he himself heard it by his own ears in at first hand. So when art thou? I am an Amalekite. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a first-hand fact. See, so he required a fact. So he must, he must, he must, he must, he must, he will, he will not force it. But he's going to do something, a uh, pattern by which the fact will come out. So he did it by asking a question. From when art thou? He said, I am an Amalekite. And so he himself is, he is held by his own mouth. He is caught by his own mouth, by his own tongue. He is the one who told it himself that he was an Amalekite. So he required, ladies and gentlemen, facts. By and by, I'm going to talk to the BOC. Ang tanga talaga ngayon nga kuwan, maawatan. Because tarot may sanga tao nga na pan, kung na nasyakti at kindaga ay jay, taginatang ko. They did not inquire a fact. They did not even require her to have a receipt. And he did not even call me. You see? Tapno ipagak nga dato itin mo na nga ng alay jay. And he decided on the basis of that person that ilang inusan na katuro pa na lang. Is there a fact on the face? See, so it invited the president that na kami, kung nakuuraan may resibo, nagbayad kami dyan ni Kenneth A, kat uuray si Kadwa may dyan ang tinuwangan. After na binayari ni Jin, alam mi. Pakikiktong akta iso na. Pakikiktong, kung naman naman, I'm going to take the receipt. And so, they made a wrong judgment. Hey, pas pasar dengan datu juga punya wrong judgement. So makit tahu ngah takal ti mana dahal no iti masih sangat banyak ketangga faktual, amen. It must be very very faktual. So that was the kind of person that David exposes on this particular scenario. He required fact. So it is a message to all of us that in every judgement that we make in this life, we need to have fact. You know, 
we need to have tact. There was a problem that I was solving. That's why I went to law school one day. Because there was a real problem I solved in a research on that makita ko marikata ka nagpita ko. And uh, the same principle is taught in school regarding that. That you are not going to move something without a fact. Say you need to, you need to know something about it. So for me right now, I understand that. And I am applying that in my life. You see, kata ito, ini, atal ito matunan. For Samuel, then, the only wonder that I have here is, how did David know this thing? You know, he did not even go to law school. Okay, so we attribute the kind of what we call power in him because he was anointed by God as a king. You see, so what does it mean? This what is the meaning of this one. We Christians can discern facts, factual. Because we have the Holy Spirit of God. The unbelievers could never uh, understand that. Ngam da tayo nga namati, mabalin tayo nga maawatan ti factual. Because ada kanya tayo ti Holy Spirit Christians. Amen? Amen, you understand that? A Christian should know iti mao ko nga facts, iso nga no basol, dapat iti Christiano kot madetect ko madetect ko madetect Kasi nohan mo nga madetect, di basol nga rami din. Ang ka nga naisalakan. Kaya na nga iti jay nga eh. Kaya na nga, jimang detecting ka, ayan na nga, power mo. Dapat amun. You know, dapat amun diya because you have the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> Unless you have not. Okay, kata ito eh. I said a while ago that David was 30 years old, but he's uneducated. There was no formal education during that time. You know, only in the king's court. That's why King Saul was a brilliant man because he was you know, surrounded with great rains during that time. But David was just a, you know, he was just a nobody during that time. He could not afford to, uh, to go to formal, formal school like, uh, like the royalties during his time. Um, um, uh, as to who, how can we attribute this wisdom regarding this one? We can say that it was because he was anointed as king. It means that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Therefore, he relies, you know, heavily on facts. Isa nga natin nga namati, you know, if you have the Holy Spirit, you must be fearful about the Word of God. At ako matibutan tayo yung word ni Apo. You know, because awan tibutan tayo yung word ni Apo, awan ang tinamnama tayo. You know, awan ang tinamnama tayo. There is no hope for you. So this one is another thing. Uh, David required facts and that could be attributed to his own person. You know, so uh, that's the first thing under expose tested David's person. Number two that is revealed here could be seen in 1516. Number two, he executed God's command at that, uh, at that moment. Let's read 1516. And David called one of the young men uh, verse yeah. Uh, and David said unto him, Ah, verse 15 kami niya. And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fell upon him, and he smote him that he died. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath thus testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. You know, Actually, for me, that's not the reason why he killed the Amalekite. Because King Saul did not execute the Amalekite, he was the one who executed the Amalekite. So that's the second thing here that we can see from the person of King David. If King Saul did not execute the command of God against the Amalekite, he did it. But ang mutoy mut, iti last chapter, iti 31, pagap ni King Saul. Nga nang patay ka nagi jay, amalikahits ka nang ala jay, pamilya na. You understand that? He did not left anything kung nang tibibli jay. And the second amalikahit who came, 
Malaikat sa baling uh, pariyo ni Jingam sa baling uh, pamilit na kapuan na batisa na Malaikat. And he executed it himself. So what what is the person of, 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 of David regarding here that was exposed? Number one, David as a leader had put a nail on the head by exposing that he is the leader who does not listen to things that are not factual. So he is a man who only listens to factual things. Number two, he is a leader who executes the commands of the Lord. So the day ti makita tayo ito yung person na, iso na dyan may sanga tao nga mga araramid, itilintig ti Diyos. Iso nga, you know, Christian sa tag sata, dag ito yung tinapintas nga dalan tayo. Nga iti kumasasawang ti Diyos kat araminan tayo nga eksakto. Amen? You are not going to, you are not going to think twice on that matter. Because that was, ladies and gentlemen, the person of this great king. He was a man who will go to factual things and he was a man who executes the will of the Lord. So are we doing the will of the Lord in our lives? We must learn from David. Okay, so adalan tayo kuma itibiyag ni David because daito iti na-expose regarding daito yung news na daito. So di jay iti first nga makita tayo nakarga na dito yung 1 Samuel chapter number 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, could uh, go from verses 1 to verse number 16. So that was the first part. Nakong uh, karga narrative of uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 1. But the second thing was verses 17 to the last verse. So, uh, first of all, the expose, he received a gravid expose. Number two, and lastly, that way, He responds with great eulogy. The eighty second. All right. So the man start expose. He received a gravid expose. Secondly, a part of this for Samuel two is he responds with great eulogy. All right. So King David, King Saul was a was very very. Unato yung he was a blessed man. Because the person who, who made the eulogy for his death is the king, a king. All right? And let's take a look on the eulogy of King David regarding King Saul and Jonathan. All right? So this is a great thing. So uh, we attend a lot of uh, funeral services. And relatives and friends will come and talk. And they will try to relieve the family by telling good Good, good things about the dead. So, what kind of tahan ng arami na days? This is big, di ba? At ako nakikita yung ako, nagbisita kanya yung umayak man, ikakti eulogy dito, gayong kumura ito, dito 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 familia na. Awan, what kind of tahan ng eulogy kat nuna tayon? Nuna tayon, ngayon nuna nabig kat awan, tikan, so, did you sound the meaning of eulogy? So, uh, It is second nga nga in record that it took the great eulogy of David regarding King Saul and Jonathan. So anya ti content na yata dapat ti eulogy. All right, number one, he described King Saul. The day ti part the day nga it content ti eulogy ni eulogy ni King David for King Saul. So ah here is a message, ladies and gentlemen. Well, before we are going to forget the lesson out of here. Uh, sige, ipantay pa ikan, sabi tayo tumapan. He responds with great theology. He described King Saul. In 17 and 18, kuna na, And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of a bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. Why did David uh, at least hinted that Judah must learn the use of a bow? Because King Saul died because of a bow. Na pana isuna. At dahil itigamin ko ha, a great man can never be killed by a sword. Only few great men will be killed by a sword. Kasi adult alipuris na mga gwardiya kanya na. And the only chance you can be able to kill a great man is by a bow and arrow. Why? Because mabal ka aglumbang, ijay kayo. And you are going to hit the enemy unnoticed. Ngayon awag na kaliklan distantly. 
you can hit the enemy clandestinely. You know, unnoticed. So, uh, kasi ito nangyari kini King Saul. King Saul died because of a bow. A bow that was shot by the enemy on a, a secret plate. So, kunan ni David, kat, oh, you must learn how to how to use a bow because that's what uh, the thing that killed this greatest man on earth today, kunan na. It was that bow that killed this greatest warrior who ever lived in our time. And so you need to, you need to learn to, uh, to use a bow. And so, in verse 19 and 20, here now is the eulogy, the description of King David regarding King Saul. Look at this one. It's a very beautiful thing. 19, kuna na. Number one, kuna na. 19. The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Kuna na. And dito ito yung maawatan. That the beauty of Israel is King Saul. Not only because he was the tallest of them all. And he was the prettiest of them all. No, pretty. Ngayon ko ng tinglis na katanga bakbakla ah. Han lang ah, handsome. Tiyo sa rin No, pretty ko naman kat na gwapo. He was not only the tallest of them all, but he is the prettiest of them all. Kat ko na ni King David. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. Anya nga tati maano na tayo tayo. An aya kakabsat ka edina napantay di 1 Samuel. At kaya't ni King Saul nga patayan ni King David. Am I right? So mapay nga tanga edina tayo dito yung kalaban na kat anayin po nga kung gunam. O ino impakiti. Apay nga tanga nag-eology pa iti mataling haga. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. And so makita tayo dito yung story ti biyag ni King King, King David, that he was a real, real great man. You know, look at this one. I, when I stay at home, I stay at home a lot of time. Agbad bantayak. But makita ka naging anak mong apa da. Sangit na, dinanog da. Nagito wala lang, kinudwa na gulag, dinanog da pa eh. Ngam, makita, no after 10 minutes. Pag ininanakob naman yun nga eh. Pag ngatang, awan ti makita ito yung adults na kasi eh. The adults got basit lang ako at 10 years ang tulad pinakawan. Ang nga senior dan ag minulag ito pa lang at basit lang ti kapulang ti kapi you know, kapulang ti but you are kwan, you are amazed why these kids are I was really happy yes, last one Saturday when I was reading the Bible and nagidwa apa na and then bigla nga after 5 minutes lang at bigla nga ayaw mayat manan o ayaw man manong ka makita kasi ito trabaho tinaga Pagkita mo lang ka nagiging karagi ubing. Isugayan mo ko na po si Kristo ka at tayo kumakat, agbalin tayo kumakas lang ubing. Ang ubing, tipanunot ah. No, di kit ubing iti, panagpasensya. Ubing ti, panagapa. Di kit sayang ti ubing ti, panagapa. Nagapa kayo after 13 minutes, awanin, kas lang kayo ka nagapa. You know, I, you really like it, but you look at King David and for me, it's a wonder because adult ni David ito, he was 30 years old, but And, and the king was killing him. Isukon ka day siklag. During this time, he was in siklag. It means he was outcast because of King Saul. He was thrown away from his family, from his uh, field, from his work. He was really one, cast, casted out. But regardless of that, when King Saul died, look at him. He said, the beauty of Israel is slain upon Mount Gilboa. There was such magnanimous forgiveness in that part. You know, a man who has no magnanimous heart can never forgive. And there is such magnanimity in that very heart. He immediately had forgiven the sin of King Saul so that he could shout this very beautiful uh, eulogy. The beauty of Israel is slain upon a mount, is slain upon thy high places. The second thing that he described about King Saul is not only his beauty, but among the beauty of the Bible, it's not only physical beauty. Ngayon ko nga iti, inu kita amda iti perspective iti leadership. Makita mo arati magnet iti personality na. Ikaw na nga sa undi jay, awan ti oray sino man nga hudyong mga manggura kanya na. 
Ada apa kanya itu memang maditi beautiful thing? Beautiful shoes, beautiful house, beautiful car, beautiful face especially. Kaya kaya tayo, am I right? So no beautiful ko nam, you are drawn to the jaiti beauty. And that's what is being described here. It means that as David looked at the entire Israel, all the citizenry are mag magnetic towards the king. It means that they it means that he's lovely. That's what we call beauty. So that is one of the strength of this uh, the character of his leader. He is a man uh, who is not hated, but he is a man who is loved. Inya ayatunda, you know that thing, uh, king. Inayata, he was. And then, kunana na tay di jay, bakong kunang ay nga influence iti bawat Israelita. So he was really talking about him. In he was just a leader, am I right? A man who was a magnetic personality is lovely. He was that man. So di jay the description ni David kanya na. He was not a leader nga nula bangkit ang ginaga na kat you lost for it because of his corruption. Or because of his crimes, but this man, he said, the beauty of Israel. Not another one, but the mighty had fallen. He was not only a man who can really, uh, who is who is described as a man who can influence all the citizenry, but he was also a man who is what they call mighty. He was mighty in the sense that his leadership uh, is very strong. That's what leadership is all about. We understand Putin as a like strong leader. Because Ure Kastita Ramir na kat kaykayat na kat Russian. But of course not all. Maybe 70%. And that's what they call might. And why is it? It's because we live in this 21st century. Unless nga hanyo nga ang mukha kapsa tinan nga mangyari to rabaw tinaga. But for me, I know it. See? Amo ibot nang nangyari kanya tayo during 1950s until today. O da kayo ngubing, masal nga amuyo. Masal nga amuyo. Why that Xi Jinping is very powerful? You should know that. Why is it? Because the USSR was broken and they were poor. China was impoverished. But because of Putin's leadership, Russia became powerful. You know, and as well as China. Um, when I try to locate uh, the mistake that happened in the past, that nagapu amin to hujju. The Jewish people, ladies and gentlemen, are the what we call the reason why things are happening right now. You know, because the Jai hujju, the Russian na darana. Tinakaw na, di jay makungkula ngayon nga atomic one, plan, iti Amerika. Inla ko na, napan di jay, napan di jay Russia. So, nakarami dumot atomic bomb dumot. Kasi tinapasamak. Awan kumati atomic bomb na kita da, nung kapuyo hudyo nga di jay nga nang ila ko, na at anda. Kas lamot na di jay na, kas limot lang. Tataktakaw amin na kita da. And right now, the world is tearing apart because of this nuclear weapons. You know, I have a lot of things to tell a story about that. My sang my sang rason. The Jewish people are uh, lovely people because they are chosen by God. But because of their intellectual prowess, that adanti atomic bomb, adanti nuclear weapon. And ang kong amo, na unyay kasta ni Apo Diyos nga mang, you know, nang urnos na nagito yung singgalot di paragdag tayo. So he described him as a mighty man, a mighty man. And uh, it's a country tayo. Or orayak pa di jay, nga karong kumati mighty man. So ni Marcos, he is a mighty man. Let's observe. Let's observe him for six years. And we hope for the best of this country. O may kumat panawan nga Iti minimum kung mga sweldo ti tao, ti manggagawak at 1.5. Am I right? Are you happy about that? Carpintero kung mga at 1.5. Iti kung mga ti minimum. At no, ada ka mo din ti professional level mo. Dapat 60 kung mga sweldo mo ang pangato. 
Kung kaano pa yung ngayon, yung ngayon yung mangyari. Nung pumuraw ti Wak, paan? Nung karoon tayo ti strong leader ng aslaki ni Tol. Karoon tayo kumatikas tayo yung description. A mighty man. You know? Taksanggasa tayo ta dahil di constitution tayo katabalbaliwan. Pa six years lang ang nuditorti kumati nagpresenting at diritirito. Ay, wala ako mati ang atang basit. Tumayang ti basit. Awan tumat. And so we're waiting for a mighty man. Like Putin and Xi Jinping. Wala ako matkas niya nga leader tayo. And that's, 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 that's the eulogy. He was not only a man who is for his beauty, that every citizen is influenced by him. They believed him. That's what beauty is all about. But he has also a a mighty character. He's a strong leader. It means he can lead. That's what he is. And uh, in verse 20, tell it not in God, publish not in the streets of Askelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of their circumcised triumph. In mountains of Ilboa, let there be no Jew, neither be rain upon you, nor fields of offering. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of soul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. Nagpintas natin yung eology ngay. Look at this one. Iti history, history to the Bible, amin nga na anointaran by God is powerful. They can never be defeated. They can never be breached. But soul was breached. His shield was cast away vilely, as as if he was not anointed. But what made this thing happen? Uh, it is because of his disobedience to his God. So Christians, we are powerful actually, because we have God in ourselves. But the moment we disobey God, that would be the time that we will go down. You know. So the thing that is a description of David because Saul was a mighty man of valor. But why is it that his shield was cast away in Mount Gilboa? And he said, as if he was not anointed by God. It is because of his vision. So, our power can be undone in the English term. Our might can be undone because of this vision. But it can never be undone if you are truly obedient to God. So, DJ, ibagbagana dito eh. And he was really trying to expose the truth about God in His Word. He's telling about the example of a man who was anointed by God, but that anointing power was gone. It was undone. Yes, it was undone. You know, because of disobedience. So, as if he was not anointed. It was undone. And so he said, Let there be no dew, no rain in Mount Gilboa. Because of the unanakasta, the shield of the mighty is finally cast away. So I took the description of King Saul and I really admire him for such a man. Na patpatayin na isuna but at the end kat sabali na tayo spirit na ngay. It was, there was really might in his own being. Ang ngay nga agimulat is nakitin akong. He did what is right. So he presented the. So in I'm telling you, in eology, ang nga may may sana lang, ang nga monolog na ito. The people are watching him, and they are, you know, they are expecting to hear from him. Anya nga tat ibagana kanya da. Kasi the king gamin idi, a a a a a a sinful king will not do this eology. The first ni order na, let the family of the king will. Hang, punan da kanya da. Pasti tiga star ini. Let all the tribe of this king be hang. Pasti the first kamak madungak da. So the soldiers are ready with their spears in their matok. But this time sebali, it was an eulogy that will tell. And and how many years did he reign? Because in his cover kodi toy, King Saul reigned forty years. Ni Saul ni ni Paul tinay bagajay. In Acts thirteen thirty one punan ni Acts 13, 21, sabi ko na ni Paul nga, and King Saul reigned for 40 years. So, apay nga tanga nag-40 years si King Saul, 
Because ni apo Jesus kami ka tanda nga babawi ti sa una. Pidi intun na king ni King Saul di di throne, intun na nga talaga without ang agbawi. So nalpas ni King Saul di jay throne na ditoy. And that is his reputation before the eyes of the king. He was a man of valor and he was a man of beauty. And uh, lastly, kahit tayo mat, di nagsangitan ni David ni Pirmi. Siguro, sangapulo nga tutut, di sangit na kini King Saul. Ngam ni Jonathan, 1,000. Kasi ni Jonathan, gamin ko, o kwa ngay, inayat na ni David ni Pirmi. Passing the love of women. Adagamit kasing ayat. Da kayo kayo mababay, kat adapay ti mga artap ti ayat niyo. Ayat the real friend, passing the love of women. Can you imagine that? So, let's take a look on the description of David against uh, for Jonathan. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty. The bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who brought you with scarlet. Ito nga yung leadership ni David ni King Saul. Can you imagine that he brought them with scarlet? Weep over Saul, for he brought you with scarlet. With other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. So ito yung leadership. Binmak ng Israel ka po ng King Saul. How are the mighty fallen in the midst? Of the battle, that they might put Jonathan, that was slain in thy high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Are you ready? Lang ti mataling haga ng English kada dun ko. Pero mi ti panagayat mo panagayat mo kanya na na unug pa inu ti panagayat ti babae at ti timbaga na. How are the mighty fallen in the weapons of war perish? So, on time with man. And the leadership right there, you know, they get friendship, na eology to friendship. And yeah, yeah, they get the sound, it's the tuning of friend. They think eology to mawatan. So, saka guys, saan tayo? Tunan na. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? Oh, Jonathan, thou wast slain in thy high places. Na unog di jaya. Ni Debi lang ti makawat di jaya. Ngam ko na na, I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Alright, so number one, iti friendship kat, mabalin to nga maliscribe, yung word nga brother. Isugay mo, dati mo ko na nga brother, brotherhood. Kung sa bali mo, ta brother, brotherhood, ta gang, satan. Na iti gaham kahit ati brotherhood, bet, dara to dara. Pas lang nga jay, nyat out na jay, biological brother mo, blood, brother. So, ti brotherhood kat, niya ko lang ti Biblia, iso ti ka unagan nga relasyon, iti dua nga hanga opposite sex, kung hang paternal related, no di ka handang agam amu, handang agkadaraan, nga nagkaroon na ti ka yung makasay. Yun, so di ti ketson brotherhood. So di ti may isang meaning iti friendship, brotherhood. A brother to me. Number two, Very pleasant as thou been. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Look at this. Ibag mga ni King Saul dito kat malakate ng mawatan. Because dito kami, iti kami royalty mga kuna, no jay tatangkat na grain. So marunong nga grain jay anak. Ngom ni King Saul, hala nga intod di jay nga privilege kanya na bilang the son of the king na amuha na nga ni King David kahit niya po Diyos into na King David. So the statement na kunan na you will be king, I am next kunan na piman. But in royalty, dapat by blood is unat is umaruno. So makita mo di dyan nga eh panagayat ni King ni Jonathan kanya na nga kunan na kat very very pleasant. So dito words lang nga rin dito maala tayo. Kasano tayo ko nung mamamun dito may sangat ako tunay nga gayom. Number one, he is a real brother. Nga niya din, nagubat ka nukot na paltugan. Ano nga hanga tumaray, eh, awanan, awanti. Arat nakita nga, nga kwa nga, duduwa na nabati niya. But, arat i-wolf mo, may nga sa nga pulo. Anya nga, itarami rin yung itagdek kay kay. 
Either na back to back tayo. Nung timay sa sabali, tingkas na na. Pinaltugo na isang at timay sa mga kaduanan, tapos nung makasurvive iso na. So, siyempre, nakatarap yung mga tahang makapagrinan yung mga isa na ti Kinan di Sangapulo nga wolf. Parang tatawa kasi ay nga, they want to save their own skin, nga konti English. At the death of other people. But I also saw some movies. Naduduwa ng nabati katarap wolf kayo may nga lima. Pak to pak, di kastada. Nagtinalikod ng aduan at they fought pak to pak. And they were alive together. You see, so they think it's not the brotherhood. Ang aja, problema ta, problema, problema ta nga dua. Problema, problema lang ah. Ang kasi mo right. Brotherhood is something that is really not leaving others behind. So no one is left behind. So aja, group that tayo, di tingkar ka tayo. Nobody is left behind. That is brotherhood. And number two, pleasant. Kahit nang si Jay Pleasant, it is the description of beauty. Na mabalin nga, arami rin tumis ang atao para kayo na. Pleasantness. Yan so, mawato yung word nga pleasant, nga, he will really do something for his friend. Kala niya po sa Kristo nga natay para kanya tayo. That is what we call pleasantness. Something that others will not dare to do, but only a real friend will do it. You know, pleasantness. So, You are so pleasant to me. Wala na. So, nga permit isangit ni King David ito because he was remembering that the pleasantness ni Jonathan that wala na nga, your love to me was so, was pleasant. And thy love to me, another one, is wonderful. Alright, so that ito yung ayam. Because there are things in this world that can never be measured. You know that? Can you measure love? Paduti, babalasan nga, chocolate lang kang flowers, kat minmigay dan. Can you measure love by eating chocolate or receiving flowers? You know, there are things in this love that can never be measured It's by love. But it can be described. And the description of that matter is enough to be understood. What do you know? About love. Love is blind. Oh, that it does not. It describes, am I right? But that's not it. The description of the King James Version is wonderful. So there are unmeasurable things that can be measured by description. So love is not measurable, but it can be described. And if you're going to love God and love your neighbor or yourself, it must be wonderful. Alright? Passing the love of women. So, kanya-kanya ito yung mga awa ti wonderful. No, anya ti wonderful king ka. Basta maawa ta tayo amin that love must be wonderful. So, what does it mean? That if love cannot be measured, at least it must be understood by description. Tap naman ko na tayo nga ayat. So, so ko nam, I love you. Anya nga ikumot ikas na midya eh. There must be something, an act that will describe that love. So nga, yun yung tiktin ko na na that He gave His only begotten Son. Di yun yung description ng matijay. So in God's mind, a wonderful love to God is to give His only Son to you and me. And that will make that love wonderful. See, so di yun yung yung kastan ni King David na nang, kwan niya? Nang describe in ni Jonathan. But by the way, last nga, in baga na, oh, I am distressed for thy brother Jonathan. So, how are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perish? So, DJ Ting Kastana, now, I have no time now to go here. Eh, kalot tayo dito eh. Anya, tikargana dito eh, chapter 1, it's the first Samuel. It describes about the debut of David. And anya itin e rebuild kanya na di tanga banda. He received a gravid expose about the seriousness of God to His word. That because King Saul did not seriously have taken the word of God as serious as it could be, he died because of that rebellion. And it gave, I believe, a stark mark on his heart that if he's going to lead the nation of Israel, he must execute God's plan. 
You know, so did you think that they're doing a pasamak? So there was an expose on that. And it even tested his, his character. He demanded facts. And he executed that plan. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a gargantuan description of his own person who will rule the nation Israel. In numbers, Roman novel number two, he responds with great eulogy. But even though he was, he was planned to be killed by the king, his heart was not tainted by evil thoughts. His heart was not tainted by revenge. But he became a person even who instilled the, the minds of the people of Israel that the first king was a mighty man who brought them with scarlet. He gave what is due to what is due. The Bible says, give due to what is due. And that was due for King Saul. He did it. So that was an eulogy. And of course, an eulogy of a friend. That Jonathan was the best of friends for David. And he described here what a good friend is all about. It must be a brother. It must be pleasant. And it must be wonderful in its love. Alright, so that is the Kargana, that is the Minsahi. Adabati na aral tayo tayo sa pa. Amukwan adukuma. You know, adukuma ta aral tayo kung agkararag tayo man. Anyaman nga na adal mo, ikararag mo ti Diyos. Alright, so shall we pray? Whatever is it that you learn from the Word of God, tell it to the Lord. If there are commitments made, you also tell Him. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are so glad to 
be here on this opening chapter of Second Samuel. It tells us a lot, and I put a word here of the Lord that to describe this uh, thing. I use the word gravity. It is a news that is filled with meaning. It, 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 indeed, it was exposed to the Lord here that the last thing that the eyes of king, it, uh, the disobedient king Saul had seen was the man, an Amalekite, and he begged him to kill him. And that was the man whom God wanted to be executed entirely. And the picture of Amalekite is seen in our time today. That God was telling Saul that he must eliminate every form of sin. But he loved some form of sin. And that sin of the Lord had killed him. And he seen it with his naked eye before he died. And uh, that was the last thing of the Lord that he had ever seen as a king. It was not a glorious uh, parade of his glory as a king, but it was the sight of, of an Amalekite that describes the Lord evil during his, during his time. And that the Lord was the effect of disobedience on his part. On the other hand, David also had commanded a very great uh, being and that he did never uh, Establish an ill will or ill feelings against a soul. And that must be the character of a leader. And he himself executed the plan of God that King Saul failed to execute. And for us today, we have a lot of things that we learn from this subject. I hope that we are learning as we go chapter by chapter. And for this people, Help us to become obedient to you because that's the message of this chapter. We must be obedient to the word of God. And because there are consequences beyond our own imagination to come. Help us, please, O the Lord. And I beg you, as we uh, uh, go to chapter 2, to the last chapter of this uh, opening book, may you bless us. Thank you so much, O the Lord. And for this people, whatever prayers they are praying, if they are Telling you to become more faithful to God, help them, O Lord, for such prayer. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand for the closing prayer? Akkor tayo.